So we are going to be talking about strategy and reels today. And the first thing I want to discuss is strategy and why strategy is so important is because you can post all the things and do all the things like engage with people, add to your network, make your posts, go live, do stories. You can do all that stuff. But if you don't have a strategy behind it, like why it is you're doing the things that you're doing, you can feel like you're on this perpetual hamster wheel. Like you're always doing the things and you're not seeing the results or anything come to fruition from your hard work. And I'll give this analogy. Like, do you think that any large corporations just like create a commercial just on the wing of it that day and hope that it sticks? No, they, they do research. They understand who's their ideal audience that they're trying to reach and the way that they're communicating and how that's going to be effective. It is no different. We are business owners and Gone are the days of like messaging a hundred people and hoping that like one of them agrees to what you have to say. Gone are the days of just posting pictures of your products and gaining interest that way. We really need to stand out and differentiate ourselves. And that begins with understanding like what it is you're trying to do. Like, what are you trying to communicate? Who are you trying to reach? And I know we talk about this a lot, but I really wanted to like give some perspective and then transition into how this applies to like reels or lives that you're doing or anything like that. So I don't know if it was last week or the week prior, we had talked about creating your ideal prospect. So like, who is the specific person that you're trying to reach. And if you're speaking to everybody, how you're speaking to actually nobody, because nobody is getting that click from you. You might have those one-off hits where like your friends and your family that already know and trust you um, are willing to come to you because they can see a difference in you. But once you you close out that warm market of people that know you, you're reaching cold market people that don't know who you are, don't know what you're saying and don't, you haven't gained the trust from them yet for them to believe and understand what you're trying to promote, right? So your strategy is first, you have to understand who is the ideal person that you're trying to reach. And if you want help on how to understand who that person is and create your ideal person, go back to, you can go back to my YouTube channel and there is a specific zoom on that. So like once you have that person, everyone talks about having a niche. And I know we've, we've talked about having a niche, having a very specific audience that you're trying to reach, having a very specific message that you're trying to put out. And that will having the ideal prospect understanding your niche, but then like, what is the strategy going forward? Cause like you can provide information and value all day long, but if you don't have an understanding of how am I going to close that gap? How am I going to close the gap of providing information and value and actually closing the sale? Right. And that's where your strategy comes into play. So what, what is it? You have a problem that you solve, right? We all have a problem that we have, we solve with our products or our business model. And if you have that ideal prospect, so I'll give you my scenario as an example, and then you can just kind of, you can kind of plug in your own thing. So my ideal person that I'm trying to reach is I'm helping other moms. And I, I state that very clearly in my my bio, right? So in my bio, my basic mission statement is I help other busy moms get their energy back and take control of their health. So everything that I post on my, on my timeline, every reel that I post, every story that I post, everything that every live video I do, every video that I post should connect with that specific miss mission statement. So I'm not just like showing random stuff that doesn't make any sense all day, every day. I'm not just posting about my products all the time. I'm not just um, one day talking about my dogs. Like, yeah, I might show those things in my stories, but if I'm making a post or a reel or a live or something, there is intention behind it. And 
it's either to connect with people that are like me, to educate people that are looking to get a solution or entertain within that realm. Educate, connect, or entertain. Always. So what is the problem I solve? The problem I solve is I'm helping other moms get their energy back and take control of their health. Now my products fit directly in with that. So anytime I'm discussing my products, how am I helping other moms with my products? How am I helping other moms take control of their health? It's in my mission statement. So I better be connecting the two. So I'll give another example. Um, if yours is, I, I help other people in recovery. It's just an example I can think of off the top of my head. Um, feel good again and rebuild their life or something like that. Everything you talk about with your products should be in direct correlation with that. So if I'm going into my stories and I'm talking about my capsules, I talk about how it directly relates to that solution that I'm trying to help. And I have to emphasize why somebody might need this right now. So when I'm talking about my story, it's connecting back to that. When I'm doing a reel, it has something that relates to that specifically. Because when, when you're doing reels, when you're adding to your network and when you're engaging with people, the, your goal is for them to go to your profile, see your profile, click follow, and actually engage with the stuff that you're posting. If you're just throwing a bunch of stuff out there and it there's no there's no cohesiveness, there's no mission behind it, there's no nothing, the people aren't going to hit follow and the people aren't going to engage with your stuff because you're not giving them anything to engage with. So the problem that I see a lot of people, what they're doing, especially with reels, I think, is you're hoping that you'll have that one viral reel that everyone is going to come flood your page, right? You're hoping that you say that one funny thing or do that one funny video or that really insightful video so that people come back to you. And what I see a lot of is people doing, I mean, obviously like dancing and stuff like that is popular, especially like with TikToks and Reels. It's the same thing, you guys. TikToks and Reels are the same thing on different platforms. They're exactly the same thing. Um, so people are doing like these voiceovers, like you, you see a clip and you hear like an inspirational thing and maybe you're doing a voiceover or something's funny. So you're doing a voiceover, but there is no intention behind the reel that you're doing. So then when people are coming to your page, if they do happen to see your reel or your TikTok or whatever, or your, or your post or anything like that, when they're coming to your page, they're like, okay, so they're looking for, how is this going to help me? Or how is this going to entertain me? And if your page isn't conveying one of those things, like if all, all they see when they come to your page is a bunch of pictures of Thrive, they're like, oh, it's another one of those things. Or if all they're seeing is like a bunch of different pictures of just your face and there's like no captions, no wording, there's no, nothing that is actually conveying the message that you're trying, that you say in your bio, they're not going to hit follow. You can do all the reels all day long, but if, and get all the views and all the things, but if they're not hitting follow and engaging with your other content, you are wasting your time because you're just going to be on that hamster wheel of why am I creating all these videos and my followers aren't going up? Why am I doing all these comments on all these posts and people aren't still liking my content? Not that your likes should validate you. Your like is an indication of whether or not what you're saying is actually hitting with your audience. So for instance, if I'm creating a reel, I have a reel that I'm posting today. If I'm creating a reel, there needs to be some sort of message behind it, either in my caption or it helps under other people understand who I'm in, who I am and how I can help them. What is the visual proof that what I'm saying is going to build connection, trust, 
or um, entertain them, right? So I have a reel that I'm going to post today that talks about mom bods because I am trying to reach other moms and help them understand that they can show up imperfectly. And that's important. I did a, a reel yesterday that talked about how I was pregnant and didn't tell anyone until I was seven months. Like that's first, that's going to draw attention. People are like, what? That's insane. Right. But then if they go read the caption, they see that the reason that I ha have struggled with my health for so long is because I jumped straight in from my parents taking care of me to having to take care of another human without ever understanding how to take care of myself. And that's why taking care of yourself as a mom is so important. It directly relates. So then if I'm talking about my products, I'm talking about how moms need to take care of themselves. So my reel makes sense. Um, I'm showing workouts. I'm showing meal ideas. That all relates to the thing that I'm trying to do. But like I can show all the meals. I can show all the workouts. But if I'm not talking about why my product is an important piece to all of that, then I'm just serving with no purpose. So I, the reason I'm here is obviously I want to gain financially for my family, but I also want to help other moms see that this is what helped me get from this place to this place. And this is what helps me be at home and present with my family. This business does. So I have to be talking about those things and redirecting those things. I see so many people that are just trying to copy other reels that other people are doing with no mission behind it. And when you're doing that, you will be so frustrated with your business because you will not see growth. You'll be doing all the things and you're not going to be getting, getting anything out of it. Yes. Your initial post that you made you first came onto this business where it was just like those quick hits where you're like talking about like, Oh my God, I feel so great. And be, that's because you were relating to your direct circle. When you're having to branch out, you need to reinvent yourself. You can't keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result. It's the definition of insanity. And it's no wonder when people are like a month into their business, they're like, this isn't working and they gave up. Yeah, because you were implementing a strategy that went towards your warm market and now you've exhausted your warm market and you're into your cold market. You've got to implement a new strategy. You have to. You have to connect with new people. What you were doing before is probably not going to be working now. And so like if you even, so I've been in this industry for three years. I had never done, I've been in sales for a long time, but I'd never done network marketing before, right? If you go back to my posts from three years ago, they are nothing like what I do now. Absolutely nothing. And I think you see a lot of your leaders and you're trying to do things like they are. And yes, I think that's important that because success leaves clues, but you didn't see what they did when they started. You just assume that the things that they're doing now is what got them success in the beginning. And it's not, you have to evolve. You have to learn the the internet is constantly evolving. Social media is constantly evolving. I mean, heck, Instagram just came out like two months ago and said, we're no longer a photo, really a photo sharing app. Like they, that's what their premise was. So all those people that had take, taken all those perfect pictures and had like all these long captions all the time and hired photographers and their perfectly curated photos, Instagram ba basically like kiboshed all that and said like, that's not the direction we're going anymore. So you have to change. You have to evolve and understand that the things that you were doing before, if you're not seeing results, it's because you need to make a shift. And that begins with having a strategy of understanding who you're trying to reach why you're trying to help them and how your products are the solution for that. They have to trust you. Um, so what are some ways that you can build engagement and have people actually click that follow button and engage with your stuff, right? Well, one of them is obviously creating reels that, that speak to a specific person. If you're trying to like get all the people viral videos are few and far between and, and 
you might have a viral video, but then like, are you actually still maintaining that audience after you have that one viral video, right? So you might have that one thing, but then if the if there's a huge drop off after, like it's for nothing. You got to cultivate a community within your within your profile, within your page. And the way that you do that is by having very specifics. So having a call to action. So if you're if you know who exactly you're speaking to, and you're creating content that speaks directly to that person, you have to kind of teach them how to come to your page or how to engage with your page because they don't know sometimes. Um, so a call to action might be like in your reels posting, click follow for more or double tap if you relate or read the caption. If you have a caption that goes into more detail, like having something like that on your reel. And this is something that I, even I need to implement that I hadn't thought of is that you need to have that because like they might watch your video and they're like, Oh, cool. And then they'll just swipe to the next one. But if you have a call to action, that's like read the caption and maybe that caption is what hits people. Or if you click, click follow for more stuff like this, or for more information, or if you relate, or if you're like me, then they can go into your profile and they're like, Oh, she's speaking directly to me. I am going to follow her. And if your page actually conveys that, then it makes sense. So some sort of call to action, like follow me, double tap, comment your blah, blah, blah. You have to kind of teach people to engage with you. Okay. So I, now we talked about strategy. I want to get into a little bit about reels and how to create reels. Um, there are, we do have other videos from other leaders that are out there. Um, you can go to the dream team page. You can search for these videos where they give you very specific things like the, the micro, I call it micro scale stuff. So like, here's where you click to add a sound. Here's where you click to like change the video to do transitions and stuff like that. What I'm wanting, wanting you to, to do is with this is a very macro scale. So you need to be taking like five to 10 minutes a day to just, and I suggest that you set a timer so that you're not caught in that <laughs> distraction loop, right? Because it's very easy for us to like go down the rabbit hole of watching videos for a long time. So set a timer for five to 10 minutes and then just flip through some reels. I don't even necessarily will, I don't even necessarily watch a bunch of them, but I'll save a bunch of the songs that I'm seeing that are coming repetitively because, or the audio clips, because those audio clips, if they're showing up repetitively, that means that they're trending within the app and you should probably figure out a way to utilize that trending audio to convey your message because chances are it will show up to people. Right. Um, so that's one thing you have to do is take the time to see like what's working or what music people are using or get ideas like they might be they might have a totally different audience and niche than you but you can get the gist of what they're doing and apply it to what yours is here's another thing make sure you have a clear video clear not a bunch of filters not like those I don't know. There's like so many filters that are like grainy and stuff like that. And I think like, yes, there's a time and a place to have a grainy filter. Like I did a video not that long ago that was like trying to strike emotion with people. Like sometimes I work out not just for the weight loss, but it's to like save me from the person that I used to be. I'm trying to provoke emotion in that. So I wanted a darker, grainier video for that one. So I use that specific filter, but if you're wanting to grab attention, your video needs to be clear. You have to have a, like your clear face, not with like a bunch of, you know, fake filters over your face that like completely distort the image of what you actually look like. Um, so make sure it's clear, make sure you have adequate lighting, that it's not like super dark in your room and that people can't, you can buy ring lights, the ring light, I'm 
looking at right now in my office, it's like a five and five foot or almost six foot ring light. I got it for $25 on Amazon. You need to invest in your business. It's 25 bucks. It's a write-off at the end of the year. Like start saving a little bit of your paychecks, something to get your adequate lighting. Or if you don't have a ring light right now, stand in front of a window in the daylight. It's the best natural lighting you can get. The lighting that comes from your light bulb is not enough. Um, so those are some tips with that, like making sure your video is clear and that you're not always standing in the same place. If all of your videos are you sitting at the same place or standing in the same place, like it gets boring for your audience and they lose interest right away. Find different places in your house, find different places in your yard to do videos don't have it just be you all the time. Maybe bring your children into it, have friends in it, whatever. Something to change up so that you're continually peaking interest. I will dress up and use props all the time in my videos too. So like changing my outfits multiple times within a day and recording, recording multiple reels or changing outfits if I'm doing like two different types of points of view. Like if it's one person talking to another person. I will have one shirt on for one person and another shirt on for another person. Um, you, yeah, so that that's important too, that you have, it's clear, you have not a crazy, blurry, distorted filter on, that you have adequate lighting, that you're changing up the scenery every once in a while, and that you're making the reel for a purpose. What are you trying to communicate in that reel? Are you trying to educate somebody? So maybe it's having a audio and then words that pop up that are educating people. Are you entertaining people? Like, yes, there, there are times where you just need to entertain people. Like, it's funny, right? Um, but if you're entertaining people, you should have some sort of relation or reason that it ties back to what you're trying to do in your comment and your, um, what's the word I'm trying to think of in the caption below. So like, let's say you're trying to appeal to other moms and you do like a funny reel about your children, like driving you absolutely insane, like asking you for snacks all summer or something like that in the caption, then you should talk about how your product helps with that specific thing. Yes, you're, you're educating or you're entertaining people, but there's a reason why you're trying to entertain people. And then you're having a call to action for people to go to your site or double tap for more or comment for more information or whatever. There has to be a reason behind why you're doing a reel. Um, if you're trying to connect, so like you're sharing your story. Like I've, I, there was a story I did a long time, a reel I did a long time ago about a previous abusive relationship. And like, I had to still in the caption again, talk about why I'm speaking about this specific thing. You can you speak about it in a few words. You can speak about it in a long form caption, but it has to tie back to what's your overall mission statement. If you're just posting these reels and you're pulling like these reels and you're hoping they stick and you have no mission behind it, you're wasting your time and you're not going to get the follow backs. You're not going to get the engagement or anything like that. So, um, let me see if there's anything else that I can say about reels. Mm. Don't be afraid to do them. Your first couple are like, I saved all of mine that I've done. Your first couple are going to be like, eh, but they will get better. And I promise you, people aren't going to be like, oh my God, her reels were horrible. I'm just not going to go with, or I'm not going to follow her. If you're, if it shows that you or her reels before, like we're awful, I'm not going to follow her anymore. If you're showing that you're evolving within your video making, like that's fine, but you got to start somewhere. And this is where the attention is at right now. I have noticed when I've gone on Facebook lately, I've been obviously directing a lot of my attention to Instagram, but I'm still showing up on Facebook. 
I noticed that the live videos that I'm doing on Facebook are not getting as many views as they used to at all whatsoever. So where I used to get 200 to 300 views on a video, I'm getting like 40 to 50. <laughs> but on my picture posts, I'm still getting like 100 plus, 200 plus likes, right? It's because I think long form video served a purpose in a time and people's attention spans are unfortunately growing a lot smaller. So the attention is with TikTok and with reels because people want something quick that they can get their mind off of their life. And they want something that's entertaining. They want something that's fast. And those things are fast. 30 seconds to a minute long is fast. So <clears throat> if you can sum up something super quickly in 30 seconds to a minute, like that's what you need to be doing is those reels. You have to be doing them. And I know it's scary. And I know like initially you think, well, I can't dance, so I can't do them. Or I, I, I'm not like super glamorous. So like, who's going to follow me? Some of the most followed accounts I see, they're just normal people, but they, un they understand who they're trying to reach and they speak, they speak on a specific topic. Like there's a kid that's probably like 20 years old that I follow on TikTok and Instagram. All he does is ADHD videos in a ball cap in his room or like in his house. Like it's nothing fancy, but he talks about a specific thing. So I'm like, oh, I want to see what he has to say about it today. It keeps me coming back. He's a dude. Like I don't really relate to him on that level, but he talks about ADHD all the time. So I'm like, yes, that interests me. And he stays true to what he's trying to convey. And he still sells stuff. So stay true to the mission. Like it might take a little bit for you to grow. Yes. But are you in this for the short gain or the long-term gain? Because if you're just looking for short-term success, that is fleeting and does not last. I am looking for a legacy personally. I want to impact large amounts of people I want this to be something that outlives me and impacts my children. So why, why are we so focused on short-term stuff? Yes, we have short-term problems in our life that need to be solved. But if you're always looking at the short game and you're not playing the long game, you're never going to re reach the long, the, the big followers or the big community or any of that stuff. If you're always just focused on today, I need to find who I can get today. I need to find who's going to buy my stuff today, right now. And that's how so many people are posting. They're posting to get the person right now, but they're not developing relationships. They're not building community. So you wonder why you run out of steam because you're always focused on what can I get right now? What can I, I need a, I need a customer right now. I need a promoter right now. Da, 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 da. You're not focused on building community and building an audience and building trust so that down the road, you might have like all these people that trust you. So then when you do come out with a promo, you've already taken that time to build all that, all that relationship and trust with people that when you're throwing out a, a promo, you have more people interested because you've helped them with X, Y, Z before. So they believe in the things that you're saying. They see the visual proof. But if you're always focused on who can I get today? Who can I get today? You are going to burn out. You are going to exhaust the audience that you currently have because they've all, all already heard your story before. I always give this analogy to my team because um, I have a, a girl on my team that works at Target and I just joke with her about this, but like the Target store, if they only let the same 20 people in and only, and then like, say like only these people can come in, nobody else, eventually those people are going to have the things that they need or those people are going to run out of money. So then they're, they're not going to grow as an industry. They have to appeal to specific people. They have to market. They have to build relationships. They have to open their doors to multiple people. If you're always just focusing on who can I help right now that's in my current audience and not growing and not building and not communicating and not connecting, you're going to run out. 
So that's why this strategy is so important to build relationships, to seek out a specific niche of individuals that you're trying to help and speak directly to them, to build a community so that you have multiple people to speak to in the future. So play the long game. Quit always stop, start, quit always focusing on, I didn't get a customer today. I'm a failure and focus on how can I serve? How can I help? How can I have a strategy? And how is this long-term going to pay off? You don't, you think that somebody opens a brick and mortar business and then people just flood through the doors the first day. If they've had no marketing, if they've had no outreach, if they haven't had people sharing their stuff, no, you can't just like, you can't just put a building somewhere and be like, ta-da, I'm open. Like you might get one person that walks in. Yes. Play the long game with this business. Because if you're looking for, if you're looking for that long-term success, if you're looking for the six figures, it's in the long game. Short-term success rarely ever happens. And you have no idea what happens on the back end. So why are you marketing? To just today. Why aren't you having a strategy of who you're helping, who you're serving, and how you can how you can convert that in the long term? So that's kind of what I wanted to do for the Zoom today. Um, usually I have like plan your week where we go day by day, but this should be a dump, jumping off point. If you don't even understand the direction you're going, it is impossible for you to plan your week. So I encourage you over this weekend to understand who am I speaking to and then how can I create content this week that is going to speak to that person. And then when you're showing up with your products and your stories, it makes sense. You're speaking to a specific person and how that product helps that specific person. When you're talking about payday, it makes sense because you're talking to a specific person and helping a specific group of people. Not just saying, I got my gas tank filled. It's Thriver Payday. No, you're saying, hey, mom, I see you trying to, struggling to put groceries in your cart. This could help you. I know you're exhausted because your kids are home all summer long. Here's a way that you can entertain your kids with one post. And then here's a way that you can take care of yourself and actually have energy to keep up with them in another post. If you're... Um, niches like you're helping addicts. Here's a way that you can, these are books that you can read that have helped me in my journey. And here's a way that you can actually feel good again. If your person is that you're trying to help um, somebody that came out of an abusive relationship, here are things that you need to do to help heal yourself. And this is a way that you can feel like you you're providing, you're not, that you're important is by having a business that you can, that you can call your own, that you can grow. It all comes together. So, um, stories, video for stories. Um, I hope this was helpful. My stomach's like growling. <laughs> And if you're talking about like you're on a Zoom and you're just saying like, ooh, learning from the best or whatever, like nobody really cares about that. How is this something that it relates to what you're trying to talk to? Like maybe you're, you're trying to talk to other moms and you're like, I never had other women friends before. And now I have a community that I can connect with multiple times a week or, um, Again, if you're trying to talk to other moms, like I have a business where they teach you everything that I can run from my home. Like there has to be a reason why you're posting about what you're posting again with strategy. So I hope you all have an amazing, amazing weekend and amazing Saturday. If you don't understand where you're going, go to my YouTube page. There's plenty of things that you can watch on there. It's just Megan Holcomb um, to find out what, how to narrow down your niche and how to create your ideal prospect you got to play the long game. End of the story. you got to play the long game and, not, and stop focusing so much on who am I going to get today. So love you guys.